Greetings, I'm Bishop Trevor Williams of Power and Praise Ministries, and I want to speak to us today on the book of Ephesians, the church. We want to look at the credendo given to the church, and as we go on, we'll look at the agenda, but we'll begin with the credendo. Now, Poem Praise Ministries is on the plaza just beside the Maypeg Hospital in Denby, Clarendon, Jamaica, West Indies. And our morning service begins at 9.30, and we have Sunday school out of that. I invite you to stop by any Sunday and worship with us. Poem Praise Ministries is a faith healing and deliverance ministry. Scores of people have been healed there and delivered. And we have seen people have got their curses broken and crippled walk and the blind see in power and praise ministries. Praise the Lord. Let us pause the prayer. Almighty God, you're my God. You're the God of the universe. Your name is Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Even now, I pray you cleanse me and wash me. Even now, Lord, I pray you fill me with yourself, fill me with your power, the might, as I undertake to share your word from Ephesians chapter 1. I pray, Lord, your blessings and leadership and direct, direction. And I pray for those who are listening that They'll be blessed and they'll be delivered. And Lord, they'll rise up and walk by faith in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord, the church. And by church, I'm not here talking about the building. I'm talking about the ecclesia. The, Greek, the New Testament was written in the Greek language. And so it was translated from it. And there are two Greek words translated church. One is Kiriakon, and one is Ecclesia. Kiriakon refers to the building, the, the center in which we meet and worship God. Now, the, the church or the Ecclesia has to do with a called out group of people. So, the called out group of people, which is the Ecclesia, meet to worship God in Kiriakon. Praise the Lord. Now, our scripture for today is taken from Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heaven realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For God chose us in Jesus before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us the one he loves praise the Lord praise the Lord and so the church is the bride of Christ that's what the Bible says church is the bride of Christ now, when there's a bride, it means that a day is coming when the bride will get married to the groom. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is a living organism. It's not just it's not an organization. There's organization in it. Just think in, in terms of the human body. The body is a living organism. There's organization in it. Coordination. So that we have the blood circulatory system. We have the alimentary canal. The food circulation uh, circulatory system. We have the, and so on. There are these systems and they, they work differently, yet they support one another. And none can do without the other. That's the church. Praise the Lord. So our first point, our first lesson is, the believer's blessings in heaven. Paul says here in chapter 1, Paul, 
an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. <clears throat> now, it is very instructive that this Paul was the same person who once went by the name Saul. <laughs> when he met Jesus on Damascus Road and he had that encounter, it, it changed his name at a point. Paul means little. Saul, and as Saul, he was big and mighty and strong. He named himself Paul, meaning little. He's not big again. He says in another scripture, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And in life I don't live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He is not the person in charge of his life anymore. Jesus Christ is now his God and Savior and boss. So it says, Paul, a little man, chosen as an apostle of Christ. Apostle means one who is sent, one who is under a commission. As Christians, we need to see ourselves as being sent by God, being called by God. As I said earlier, that the word ecclesia, from which we get the word church, really means called out. Now, someone has called us out. We are no longer our own. We are called out by Christ Jesus. Paul says, I am an apostle, not a big person, but a little person, but commissioned by God, called by God. I'm under God's orders. I operate under God's orders. An apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. It was God's will to save me. I'm a part of his almighty plan. I was chosen from before the foundation of the world by God. Paul says, and when the time came, God revealed himself in me. He had known God, the Father, and had been going on and very zealous. He had not been a man out there, you know, having many women and cursing and drinking and behaving rudely. No, he had been a god fearing man. But he had not received Jesus Christ as a Savior. He had rejected Christ. And so he had set about to stamp out the church. Because as far as he was concerned, it was a cult. As far as he was concerned, this was not supposed to exist. So he went to stamp it out. On his, on his way to Damascus, the capital of Syria, where he had been told that believers had been meeting and worshipping God. On his way there, God met him in the presence of Jesus Christ and knocked him off his donkey. And he asked the question, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? The God says, you get up. You're going to go into the city. And I will let you know what I'll have you to do. Praise the Lord. The God's holy people in Ephesus. He says, I'm addressing God's holy people in Ephesus. Of course, the church there, the church plant there was established by him. Now he was in prison and could not go there physically. But he could write and he had the means of getting a letter there. The Roman world had an exceptional postal service. Exceptional postal service. Besides, he had his brothers who used to visit him in, in prison in Rome. And for a while, while in custody, he was in his own place where he paid you know, rent, uh, paid, paid rent for a house and he was on the guard by the soldiers. He was free to interact with people. People could come and go and so on. But he says, I'm sending this message to you, people of Ephesus, because you are God's holy people. Holy is from the Greek word hagios, which means set apart. <clears throat> it means it's not common for the use of everybody. 
Hagios. It is set apart. It says, you are God's holy people. You are God's set apart people. God has set you apart for his purpose. And therefore, I am standing with you. You are the faithful of Christ Jesus. You are faithful. And faithfulness is one of the virtues of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. If you want to know, you know, there are people who are faithful, who are still not, uh, uh, who are demon possessed, I've met them. But faithfulness is not the only virtue. It's love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We must look for all of these virtues. That's what this Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. And of course, there are other virtues, but this is virtues of this kind, right? I have met faithful people who have turned out not to be operating on the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Very faithful. So you can look for all those one virtue. You have to look for all of them, but these people are faithful. Of course, no doubt they had been displaying the other virtues as well. It says, you are the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you. Now, they had been saved by grace already. So when he used grace, he uses grace in this sense, not in the sense of unmerited favor of salvation, but he uses grace in the sense that God is giving you support. Stand strong in God's support, in God's guidance, in God's blessing. He's saying blessings be upon you. God's blessings, God's provision, God's goodness and greatness be upon you and peace. And peace, the peace of God that passes understanding. Even when circumstances are bad and once upon a time in former times you'll be worked up. Circumstances would cause you to lose heart. But no, because of God's grace on your life. Because of your knowledge of him, you are calm. You know this condition exists, the thing is there, but you are able to face it with strength and fortitude. It's like uh, Jehoshaphat when he called it, uh, the sacred assembly in Jerusalem. After the three nations, the three armies had been dispatched to come and ravage him and his people. He said, Lord, we're living in the land with which you have blessed us. You gave this land to our four parents and from our four parents to us. And all these people are coming to drive us out, to drive us somewhere else that we don't know. But Lord, we don't know what to do. We can't banish them. But our eyes are on you, praise God. Our eyes are on you. So the peace of God that passes understanding is saying, keep calm. Relax. Give the matter to God. Look to him in a calm way. There's no need to get worked up. And you know, getting worked up doesn't help you. Know? Just be calm. Just relax. Just have faith in God. So he's saying grace and peace. I want you to experience God's favor. I want you to experience his mercy, his power, his might, his provision, and peace. Praise the Lord. To you from God, grace and peace to you from God, our Father. God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. He is here speaking of the persons of the Godhead. God is God is one. The Bible says God is one God. Hear, o Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Now this God reveals himself to us in three persons. He reveals himself to us in the person of the Father, the glorious Father. He reveals himself to us in the person of Jesus Christ. He reveals himself to us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Bible tells us that the Jews confronted Jesus and asked him, why is it you have always been healing people, doing these things on the Sabbath? His reply to them was, my father worked 
he's a tool. No, I work. In, in other words, there was a time in human uh, history, I don't like to use the word history in that way, when uh, the father, it was the father, the personality of the father, the person of the God, it was the father, the first person of the Godhead who was at work. In him, of course, was the Son and the Holy Spirit. But it was the Father. When the, the Jesus had an encounter with the Pharisees and the Jews as to why he healed the man and the Sabbath, he said, my Father worked hitherto, and I work. You read the Old Testament, you're not going to see Jesus. You see Father, the Father. I see a number of names, Elohim and El Shaddai and so on. My father worked hitherto, and I work. So Christ came as the second person of the Godhead, not second in the sense of rank, not second in the sense that he is less in standing and power, because it is one God. But he is a visible person of the invisible God, and he came and he did his work. He said, my father worked hitherto, and I work. And then after his tenure had come to an end, he said to the apostles, I am going back to the Father, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter, another helper. The Greek word is paraclete, which means helper. I'm going to send you another helper who is going to come to be with you and to live inside of you. This is the first time in human existence that God is going to live in all believers. All believers. Prayer to that time, the Holy Spirit would come upon certain people to do the work God wanted them to do. Because you can't really do God's work without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You can get out there and talk. And you might even win people. You can have people following you. But you can't save them. They won't be saved. It, it is the Holy Spirit who really saves. It is the Holy Spirit who really heals people. It is the Holy Spirit who really delivers people, who drives people, drives demons or the people. In Matthew 12, after Jesus had uh, delivered this man, after he had driven demons out of this man, the clergy of the day, the Pharisees, saw and commented, it is out of it was with the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that Jesus drove demons out. And he said, no, but if a kingdom is divided against itself, he cannot stand. If Satan is divided against himself, he cannot stand. But I use the finger of God to drive demons out. I am driving demons out to the power of the Holy Spirit, which means the kingdom of God is come to you. The kingdom of God is here. Don't criticize it. The kingdom of God is here. The, the Apostle Paul is saying to these believers, you are members, you are subjects in the kingdom of God. Yes, we are still in this life for a while. Because God is proving something in, his, in this universe. He's proving something to Satan. Satan messed up the human race. And he concluded that God could never use mortals to defeat him. Because he had succeeded in getting his nature in us. And he knew we were absolutely evil. And as what sin is. Sin makes us absolutely no good. Absolutely evil. Absolutely no good. But God in his grace. In the person of Jesus Christ. Same God. Who, worked, who manifested in the person of the glorious father. Is no is now manifesting himself in the person of Jesus Christ. And he came and he died for us. He said, no man takes my life from me. I have power to lay my life down and I have power to take it up. And I'm laying down my life for you. I am laying my life down in order to liberate you. I'm paying for your sins and I'm correcting the evil that has been done in the universe. And I'm also creating a world, a universe that is perfect. That we are seen will never be able to rear its ugly head anymore. Never again will sin occur in this new world. 
So Christ came and died to achieve a number of things. So he called uh, birth people out unto himself. He, he has selected us as his bride. Paul says, I have exposed you to one husband, even Christ, so that I may present you to him on that day as a chaste virgin, as a virgin without spots and wrinkles. So I want you to walk the walk and talk the talk. I want you to live that life that reflects the Holy Spirit. Reflect the Holy Spirit. Just live a life of surrender to Him. <clears throat> so it says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to Him. He is blessed forever. I adore him, adoration and praise and honor to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. <clears throat> he has blessed us in heavenly realms. We have been blessed, but the blessing is not just in this life. The blessing is also in heavenly realms. Blessings in heavenly realms in Christ. God has blessed us in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. God has blessed us in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. God has blessed us in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus our Lord. To God be the glory. We are blessed. <clears throat> what a wonderful thing. Now, he has listed a number of the blessings. And we are going to be looking at them one by one. We need to know what are these blessings. You know, the songwriter says, When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count the many blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. At times it does seem as if nothing is happening for you. Nothing is going on. You are abandoned, rejected, forsaken. That's how it appears. The devil applies pressure on us. And it doesn't appear as if anything is happening for us. The devil applies pressure. And we feel as if we have no hope. We are here for no good reason. But we are here for good reason. No? We are here for God's purpose. We are here for a good reason. God loves you. And he has brought us here. Satan interfered and messed up the human race. And God came in person. And has redeemed us. We have been bought back. Praise the Lord. Bought back. We belong to him. Yes, we are still living in the evil world. The sin nature from Satan has been crucified. But not eradicated still in us. But if we surrender to God and trust Him, the sin nature will be kept crucified and inoperative. When we read God's word and meditate on it and pray to Him and build a relationship with Him, the sin nature will remain dead. When we feed the sin nature <clears throat> with the things around us, the soul music, the reggae, whatever, whatever you, the arguments that are not good and clean, we are feeling this in nature. The devil also, and when I say the devil, it is one devil, is not omnipresent, and there are both, there are seven billion people on planet Earth. So I say the devil, but it is really his demons and agents. Fire things into our minds, and we, instead of recognizing that here's an evil thought, and this has been placed in my thoughts, by Satan or his forces. Let me ask God to cleanse me and pray of his thought. We begin to meditate on his thought. I remember this person saying that it seemed as if Satan was able to read our thought pattern. As I meditate on it and as I turn it over and as I read the Bible, I realize he's not able to read our thought pattern. What it does is to fire things in our minds, our thoughts, and 
we are not re realizing the, the thoughts come from Satan. So, and we are there interacting with them. And is using our reasoning and is guiding us a certain way. Is trying to get us to see that, want to acknowledge to say that is a good. We are, you know, we are not being treated rightly. You know, God is not fair, and so on. Whatever the thought is, maybe a evil thought, maybe to commit fornication, and it might be saying to you, well, you know, God will understand. You know, you can't live without sex, you have to, and so on and so on and so on. We are not realizing that the thought with which we are interacting has been placed there by Satan or his forces. The same thing happened to Jesus, you know. While he was there in the garden, in the desert, rather, the, the, the account in Luke says Satan was there with him for the whole period, 40 days and 40 nights. And Satan was putting things in the spirit. <clears throat> there were times when he was there praying, he had to stomp his feet, so to speak, and rebuke Satan. It, Satan said, said to him, seeing that you are God's son, turn this stone into bread. That seemed like something good, but that would take him out of God's way. It did more with Satan going anywhere, yet he saw himself on the pinnacle of the temple. He was still in the desert. But he saw himself on the pinnacle of the temple and Satan was saying, cast yourself down. Satan even quoted the scriptures. God will give his angels charge concerning you to bear you up in their, you know, their hands so that um, you will not dash your foot against a stone. He was the Lord Jesus who was God in the flesh was interacting with Satan. But he was rebuking him at the same time. We interact and we don't rebuke. We need to rebuke Satan. We need to rebuke him and, and rebuke his forces and, and not to embrace the thoughts that he places in our minds. So it places, the, the evil spirits do place, place thoughts in our minds and get us to interact with the thoughts and interact with them, to discuss, to argue, to reason, and so on. It is to achieve a certain purpose. So it goes, Paul goes on and says, um, God chose us in Christ before the foundation, before the creation of the world. Have you thought of that? We were chosen by God before the foundation of the world, before Adam and Eve were made. God knew us, knew us by name, knew, us, knew everything about us. Another scripture says Christ was crucified from before the foundation of the world. That means Adam's fall didn't take God by surprise. God had known he would fall. God had known he would carry us with him. We would have, we would have fallen with him. Even though we were not physically present and we had no awareness of Adam and Eve, we never met them nor saw them. We have never spoken with them. Yet when they sin, we sin too. That's a curse. And that's why we have to be capable of ancestral curses and generational curses. We have to be careful what we do and how we live. Because our children, yet unborn, are in us acting. And they will be born with the, doing the things that we have done. Adam and Eve sinned against God. And we got messed up also. I trust that these thoughts will be a blessing to you. Remember our service at Palm Praise Ministries begins at 9.30 every Sunday morning. 9.30. I trust that you will stop by and join us in worship. May God bless you. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity you, you have provided me and provided the people. Lord, you have enabled me to share your word. You have enabled the people to listen. I pray, Lord, you bless me, strengthen me, bless this program, bless the people who will be listening to your word. In the presence of them, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.